Hey there, TJ here and welcome to Yeah The D's where we are going over our tough preliminary final match against North Melbourne down at Icon Park on Saturday the 19th of November. It's always a tough game against North. Uh, well, usually they're tight matches. We've played them five times so far in the existence of AFLW with all of the results being under two goals. The last five results being two points, ten points, nine points, two points and four points. The first time we played them is the only time we've lost to North Melbourne where they won by four points. North got the first goal of the first quarter by just sort of forcing the ball forward whenever they could. You know, sort of got a bit lucky with the way the ball bounced. It sort of came out the back and it was an easy goal in the in the goal square to get the first one on the board. Uh, you could see from straight away that North Melbourne just brought this immense unrelenting pressure around the ball which really uh, refused to let us control the ball by hand it didn't really allow us to have our clean handball game happening we really like to move the ball quickly but with the way that the ruse sort of set up behind defense they played a spare in defense as well um, we, we really found us kicking to an out number every time we went inside 50 so we were hitting up a, a sole kangaroo ready to take an uncontested mark and repel a lot of the time the pressure on the ball handler just wasn't able to sort of get a clean handball out or a clean kick out to really you know get our chains going so it was uh, very impressive from North Melbourne, especially the way that they set up in defence and really challenged us. About halfway through the quarter, um, Sarah Fitzsimons was able to take a nice mark inside 50 from a kick from Karen Paxman. And, you know, Karen, Karen didn't have one of her best games, but she was one of the best for us because she was just relentless with her effort and um, trying to get the ball out and break away from that, that pressure in the midfield. The most significant moment sort of in this game was really the... Um, seemed an innocuous injury but uh, Taylor Harris injured her shoulder in this opening quarter um, going for a ruck contest up against North Melbourne ruckman and um, they sort of clashed their arms together and she ended up with a sore shoulder and going and getting it strapped and she looked uh, very uncomfortable straight away after that happened so it would um, that injury would you know significantly curtail her influence through the rest of the game and it meant that you know Lauren Pierce had to play a bit more in in the ruck role which is totally fine she's an Australian ruckman she's quite uh, capable of playing that role and meant that Eden Zanka could uh, put in to support her a bit more so when Taylor Harris was on the ground she played a bit more forward throughout the rest of the game rather than sort of getting rotated into the ruck really shortly after that incident where Taylor Harris got injured Lily Mithen received a 50 metre penalty and was able to go in and, and uh, put us a goal up with three minutes to go in that quarter. So it was um, a bit sloppy for North Melbourne to give away that 50 metre penalty that led to the difference in the quarter. These kicked two goals for the quarter, the Roos kicked one, so we're up by six points at the end of it. And it was really evident that North's pressure really knocked us out of our rhythm. Like we could see that our game was really building up until this point. We were playing really, really well and getting those chain handballs out fairly easily. But, um, yeah, North pressure knocked us out. But we were still able to go into the second quarter six points up. For the second quarter, it sort of uh, continued along the same way, just big pressure from both sides, a lot of turnovers from both sides. Because of that pressure, North got their second goal for the game off a free kick where Libby Birch was holding on to Emma King's arm. And it was definitely a blatant free kick. She was... Um, I guess when you kind of like grab arms and hold them down, you're just sort of panicking a little bit. There was a bit of a height advantage towards uh, Emma King, but um, yeah, probably could have done a bit better in that contest and not give away the free kick. But uh, yeah, Emma King kicks the goal for North, scores a level. Later on in the quarter, we get our chance and Casey Sheriff is able to kick a really nice goal from fairly, fairly straight in front, about 35, 40 metres out. So we kicked 1-1 that quarter to the Kangaroos, one goal, two. So the Kangaroos beat us in that quarter, quarter by one point to make it a five-point margin at half time. Now, the third quarter was the most interesting quarter because North Melbourne absolutely dominated this one. They registered 18 inside 50s, and we only had two inside 50s for the whole quarter, but North were only able to score the two behinds. They really trapped the ball in that forward half, we were finding it so hard to get it out. They were just sort of attacking and intercepting at will across the half back, but then they weren't clean enough going into um, into our defence. And our defence really, really held up in you know making those opportunities not be easy, make genuine scoring attempts really, really difficult for them. Sarah Lampard, uh, Meef Chaplin, Libby Birch and co all rebounded tirelessly, like getting the ball out and then 
able to man back up before that ball was getting rebounded back in. And it was just sort of this repetitive um, flow of the ball just going in and out of North Melbourne's inside 50 for the vast majority of that quarter. I think why we were struggling to come out from that back line is because we do rely on Taylor Harris a lot there to sort of, you know, be that kind of Max Gorn style player where we can kick down the line to someone really tall who's going to be able to take a contested mark and get out of defensive 50 down the wing that way. But yeah, because she was injured and um, spent more of her time forward, we weren't really able to do that and get that next mark out of defensive 50. So there was only two points scored this quarter, both of them going the Ruse's way. I was actually pretty happy with that result considering the way that the quarter got played and that was where the Kangaroos were, you know, sort of getting reward for their pressure but not reward for their effort because they really should have been able to convert probably, you know, two, two, three, four, five opportunities into scores and only had two opportunities converted into points. That cut the lead for us down to three points going into a very, very tough fourth quarter where the pressure's on, you know, first goal is going to be uber important in this situation. One of the great efforts in this last quarter actually came from Taylor Harris, where she was able to spoil an easy chess mark, which then gave Alyssa Bannon a chance to try and kick a goal, which unfortunately got touched on a line. But it was just great to for, to see a player that, you know, is in so much pain go through that sort of effort to just create a spoil and create a contest. Like, she didn't know whether she'd exactly get there in time, probably when she was running, but she was able to, got the, got the, got the fist in, and, um, you know, created a great opportunity for us to kick a goal, which, yeah, just unfortunately was touched on the line. With about nine and a half minutes to go, Kate Hall took a really important chess mark and was able to kick a goal. It was quite windy, so a bit, t- bit tough in those sort of uh, situations, but she had great composure to take the mark, go back and make that pressure kick. She protected the drop of the mark. It was just really, really good footy. Just extended our lead up to nine points. And then, obviously, the the best moment of the match was the sealer that Daisy Pierce kicked and just sensing the moment and just slamming it on her boot and putting it through and just it just delivered perfectly. And once that goal was in, we just all knew, yep, cool, this game's done. It was... Um, Fantastic for her to be the one to put the sealer on the game and all the girls got around her, which was fantastic. Yeah, really tough quarter, but we were able to kick uh, two goals in that quarter and the Roos not score at all, so we went on to win by 17 points, which was the largest margin of the game. There was a big second half from our defenders led by Libby Birch to only concede 16 points for the game. And only two points in the second half is a phenomenal effort. These girls, they have the best record ever in AFLW history. Four points conceded. It's the lowest score ever conceded in a season. And they've continued to go on and do uh, a really great effort in restricting teams in the final series here. So it's just uh, just all class. And, you know, we really saw our class sort of shine out in that last quarter. You know, both teams are going to be a little bit more fatigued, but we really sort of shone through and were able to get the reward with those two goals throughout that. I I felt like the ball didn't quite bounce our way for three quarters because of the pressure that was put on by North. They cut down our handball game. But thanks to our defenders, especially in the third, especially Meef Chaplin, who's just really finding her own. It was just a really gutsy win to just sort of fight that out with and not give up with the amount of pressure that was put on to the girls so um yeah great great job by them roll on into the grand final which is just fantastic team stats are interesting but yeah one of the really important ones that i see here is that sticks out is marks inside 50 so for the kangaroos to have that many inside 50s in that third quarter or even for the game and only have one mark inside 50 for the whole game really shows how well our defensive structure stood up we had six marks inside 50 for the game with um you know they had the loose defender of in defence that was cleaning stuff up, but we were still able to get six times the amount of marks that they had inside 50. It just really shows a a big difference, but hit-outs about even, tackles about even. Uh, We had 10 less inside 50s and still uh, had three more goals than them. Clearances even, free kicks ended up even, but I'm pretty sure we didn't even get one for that whole second quarter, which was just crazy, because there was a lot of uh, thrown (laughs) hand passes, which uh, didn't get called up. But yeah, pretty even it throughout the disposal. So it was just showing that it was a really, really even game. And then, yeah, we roll into the grand final. So grand final's happening this Sunday, November 27th, up in Springfield at the <laughs> brand new training ground for Brisbane because 
cricket's taking over the other stadiums. Fair enough, because Brisbane have earned the home ta- home ground advantage, and um, yeah, we'll see how this goes on Sunday. But yeah, a little bit of history between us and Brisbane. We you know played them in April this year in season six, and we beat them in the preliminary final at the MCG by four points to then go on and play Adelaide, and unfortunately become runner up in that game. Uh, this year, Adelaide got beaten by Brisbane in the, the prelim for season seven. So, you know, they've gone on to make it there and we've beaten North. This is Brisbane's fourth grand final in seven seasons. And uh, they've only won the one out of their previous appearances. They won the 2021 season. The first time they played in a grand final and lost, I actually DJed their after party, which was really, really weird, DJing a footy team's after party after they don't win the grand final that was a bit of a strange gig uh, but that was quite a few years ago now but um, yeah we've only played the Lions once this season and it was our only loss and uh, yeah Brisbane won by 15 points they would have been pretty keen to uh, play us after we beat them in the prelim in the previous season that actually ended a five match losing streak against us and we were up by 13 points at quarter time so it was you know, a great comeback by Brisbane in round four this year. They are definitely the biggest challenge in this competition at the moment. They finished on top. They finished on top by 0.3 of a percent against us. They have one of the better attacks in the league and we have the best defence in the league. So it's going to be a great challenge to see us both verse each other. It's actually also Taylor Harris's fourth grand final and uh, she's yet to hold up the cup so hopefully she can she can do that this weekend along with Daisy and Pax who are looking for their first grand final win as well so it's the two best teams this year in the comp and I think this game's going to be an absolute cracker so leave your thoughts in the comments below and thank you very much for watching Yeah The Days Petrarca! Petrarca! It's just so special for such our club. Our club, mate. Our club. Lastly, after 57 years of pain, it's coming home.